church who helps the needy. So this um, Wednesday is our senior luncheon. Uh, we begin at 1130 with bingo and we're having turkey, mashed potatoes, corn, and pumpkin squares. Um, uh, since Southerners are on a cruise, they really need help. So those of you that have signed up, please try to be here between 9 and 930. Um, a thank you to all of you that brought in sweatshirts and hoodies uh, for the last two months. They were delivered to our Father's Kitchen, and thank you. They are so appreciative of what our church and our family does. So things that are starting. Seems like we just had this last year, Pastor. Toys for Tots. You know about Toys for Tots. The boxes should be here next week. A reminder, we have only to December 10th, this will all be in the Carolyn, to bring in unwrapped toys. Because on December 20th, over 3,000 families in Central New York will receive toys and food. So, put a reminder, Toys for Tots, until December 10th, the boxes will be out there. Naomi was wonderful a few years ago. She came up with the idea of Christmas bags. As you leave today, please take a Christmas bag and a list of donations of food for our Christmas baskets. This week is soup and Chef Boyardee. The directions are for you to put food in here and bring it back every week. Don't hold on to it to the end. I get very stressed out if you hold it out to the end. So every, um, if you don't come, you know, every other week, whatever. But we need the things because December uh, 13th is the day that we give out the basket. So please bring it back every week. And my last thing is Christmas baskets. We will give 40 families, at least 40 families, uh, a Christmas basket. And thank you um, to our president and to the council for approving. We give each person a $30 gift card for Wegmans so they can buy whatever meat they want, potatoes or whatever, along with a huge box of non-perishables. Please sign up, this is very important, or call the church office if you know a family in need, we need to know before December 13th, because that is the pickup day, 10 to 12. There's a sign-up sheet as you leave. Please sign your name or the person's name and a telephone number. Sometimes we forget, and I have the baskets here. So thank you to our pastor. Thank you to the council for all that you do. And I'm done. <laughs> now you're Imagine that, Bob getting stressed out. <laughs> uh, just a couple announcements. One, um, our compassionate friends were having our worldwide candle lighting ceremony on uh, December the 10th. It's a Sunday evening, so if you know of anybody that's uh, lost a child or a grandchild or a sibling and they'd like to remember them, we do it on that evening. The ceremony lasts about an hour. But, uh, it's usually very well attended and very well liked. So if you know of anybody, just let us know. We'll have bulletins and they can call us or email us to let us know if they want to come. Uh, fellowship Hall, we're, um, we're getting the new floor. The floor is in, but we want to do some painting first. So we need to get people to help us paint. Chip Carroll's going to lead us and you know, get us ready to do it. So. The first uh, day that he well, set up a date, if you can come that day, and he'll tell us what we need to do and how to do it. And after that, you know, those of us that, that aren't working during the day, we can come in and, and do it. So it's quite a bit of pain. The paneling on the walls down there, and then the floor will go in after that. So, um, and we have a sign-up sheet down there, so if you can, uh, sign up, and, and uh, we'll get that going. Okay. 
here. So for communion today, we're going to do the families first. Each family will come up, up in front here, okay, and stand, and then after we'll uh, do the communion. And then the next family will come up. We have four families, is that right? Five? Okay, five families. So we will uh, do those five families first, and then we'll go through to the rest of the congregation. And last, uh, I want to wish my, uh, my brother Bill a happy birthday today. Would have been 65. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, Kate. No, it's okay. okay. to buy actually a whole farm, which is $715. If you look at the back page of your bulletin, it explains what animals they will receive. They'll receive uh, tools, farming equipment, and seeds, and education to do this. So this will take them out of poverty. So one of the ways we want to uh, earn money is we're going to do a bake sale on December 3rd, which Please bring baked goods to sell, and then there will be some to buy. We're also going to have this jar placed in the narthex so that if anyone would like to make any donations, the farm is $715, and that's what we're going to try to raise. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to everybody. Um, I have just a couple of things. Um, Last week, I announced that we're doing a congregational vitality survey. Those of you with emails should have already received that link. If you have not or if you don't do computers, uh, we do have a limited number of paper copies available. I think there are a few out in the narthex, so if you need a paper copy, uh, please take one. Uh, we need as many people as possible to fill out this survey. Um, this is kind of like um, uh, the Synod likened it to a house inspection. So. Uh, it's, it's giving us an idea of what's good here, what, what could be improved. Um, so, yeah, so that um, the survey will be open for one more week. Next week we're going to close out the survey, and then we'll be working with our director for evangelical mission uh, to get the results tabulated and have her come in and, and talk to us about that. Um, I'm thinking probably for her to come in at this point will be sometime in the new year, but I will keep you posted on that. Um, for those of you who were here during the summer, and you may have may remember having come to a worship service where we were hosting a pastoral candidate uh, as a neutral site congregation, I'm pleased to announce that uh, that congregation is King of Kings uh, down the road from us in Liverpool. They did call her, and she is being installed this afternoon at 2 o'clock at King of Kings. Uh, so if you are free this afternoon and would like to come and celebrate with our sister congregation there, uh, please do so. And again, it's 2 o'clock this afternoon. The last thing that I have, uh, yesterday was Veterans Day. So those of you in the congregation who are veterans, let's take a moment. If you're able, please rise. If you're not able to rise, raise your hand so we can thank you. Uh, with that, I invite the entire congregation to please rise as we begin worship. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our sins. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. 
unity. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcomed. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. <laughs>
creation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer the honor, worship, and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. 
I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like ever flowing stream. Word of God, word of life. <laughs> Our song today is Psalm 70. Please read the book for a minute. Be blessed, be pleased, O oh Lord, to deliver me. O oh Lord, make a haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure and ask for shelter have a bad and desecrate. Let those who say to me, Aha, they will <coughs> over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad to you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians. <clears throat> we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up into the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. You may be seated. Would any of our children who are here today like to come up for a message? Got a few? Okay, great. Oh, your shoe's untied. Okay. <laughs> Oh, wow. Good morning, guys. Uh, let's see. Can we find a spot for you guys to sit? Okay. Oh, we got a few more coming up. 
Good morning. Oh, it's so good to see all of you today. Uh, today's a special day for some of us. Uh, can you tell me what it is? Why? First, communion. First communion. All right. Do you remember what you learned about communion in class? Anything? No. Okay. It was a few weeks ago, so that's all right. Okay. So we remember that everybody is welcome at God's table, right? Everybody. And we share the bread and the wine. I actually have got a funny story to tell you. Um, when I was your age and I was doing First Communion, churches weren't offering grape juice yet, so we had to taste the wine. And the pastor knew that we weren't going to like it. And so he had us practice. And as soon as we tasted the wine, as soon as we came out of the church, we all ran to the water fountain. <laughs> so you guys are lucky because you get to you get the option of having grape juice. Um, so, but communion is about everybody coming to the table. It's about being one with Jesus. Jesus is with us as we take the bread and the wine or the grape juice, and it's a special time, right? It's a special time to remember that Jesus is always with us. Jesus loves us. And Jesus always wants to welcome us to his table. That's all you guys need to remember. Okay, even though we talked about it a little more in depth in class, right? It's okay if you don't remember. We, have, we don't always remember as adults either. So we have a lifetime of learning about this today. So we're very excited for those of you who are taking communion for the very first time today. That's wonderful. Can we pray? Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We thank you that you have given us this gift of Holy Communion, where you always remind us that you love us, that we are welcome, and that you are with us. Help us always to remember that as we come after today, as we come and receive communion and be one with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. It's wonderful. If you were here last week, uh, we celebrated All Saints Sunday, where we remembered our loved ones who have gone before us to be with Jesus. This week, we hear Paul's words to the Thessalonian congregation in the first century about what has happened to those who have died before the Lord has returned. What happens to us when we die is an old question one that we continue to ask today because we really don't have any concrete answers, only ideas that range from people's near-death experiences to full book accounts from people who claim to have journeyed to heaven to different clues and hints we have from different biblical texts. Today's passage from 1 Thessalonians is one of those hints that we have from the Bible. And so I'd like for us first to back up and look at what we know about this letter and about why the Apostle Paul wrote it before we turn to interpreting today's text. And what I would like to start with is this. The books in our New Testament are not arranged in chronological order. They're actually arranged according to size. So uh, Paul's letter to the Romans is the largest one that comes first, and then at the end of his letters is are the smallest ones. In actuality, scholars think that 1 Thessalonians is the earliest written book of the New Testament, coming to us from sometime around the year 50. Paul had traveled throughout Asia Minor, which is present-day Turkey, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, and then he had traveled over into Greece. The book of Acts, which contains a much later account of Paul's life, says that Paul traveled first to the city of Philippi and started a congregation of believers there, and then he traveled on to Thessaloniki, where he again started a congregation of believers. 
Now, according to Acts, Paul was driven out of Thessaloniki by a mob and then continued on. And at some point on his continuing missionary journeys, he wrote this letter back to the congregation he had begun in Thessaloniki to encourage them in their faith and also to answer some questions that they had. And one of those questions was about what had happened to their loved ones who had died. You see, Paul had preached that Jesus was going to return soon. Paul and the other apostles were expecting Jesus to return in their lifetimes and make all things new, and they had taught this to the congregations they had started. They were expecting not to experience death, but to move immediately over into that new creation that Jesus had promised. And when Jesus didn't return as they expected, and when some of their numbers started dying, the Thessalonians were becoming concerned. Perhaps some were starting even to lose their faith because of this. And so Paul wrote today's section of the letter to comfort them. And he starts by saying that we should not grieve as others do who have no hope. Hope has not died because Jesus has not yet returned. Rather, Paul says, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and even though he has not returned yet, because of what he did, we have hope that he will return one day. And when Jesus does return, he will bring with him those who have died, who have gone before us, as we remembered last Sunday for All Saints Day. Those of us who are still alive when Jesus returns will not precede those who have died. Rather, Paul says, Jesus will descend from heaven and will raise up our loved ones from the dead first. Then those who are still alive will be caught up in the clouds together with the Lord to meet him as he comes. And we are to encourage one another with these words, Paul says. Well, I don't know about you, but these words of his raise more questions for me as much as they encourage me. Now, this text is where some Christians get the idea of the rapture, that idea where believers will be taken up into heaven while bad stuff still happens here on earth. And when that imagery gets played out in movies, for example, it's frightening. People blink out of existence. Cars run into one another, helicopters and airplanes fall out of the sky, and everyone who is left is consumed with terror at what comes next. Well, I'm here to tell you this today. There is no such thing as the rapture. That's not what Paul is talking about, and we do not have to worry about planes and cars suddenly losing their drivers. The idea of the rapture was created in the 1800s by someone who not only misinterpreted this text, but then put it together with other misinterpretations of things happening in the book of Revelation, which is not even authored by Paul. And Paul probably never read Revelation. He was most likely dead before it was written down. The rapture is not a true Christian belief, and it is sad to see how this idea has taken over large parts of Christian theology today. So, what is Paul talking about here? The image that he's using when you look at the original Greek words and their context is the image of people of a city coming to greet their long-awaited and victorious king. So yes, we who are alive when Jesus returns will be caught up in the clouds together to meet the Lord in the air, but we're not going to stay in the air, and we're not going to go to some far-off distant heaven. Rather, we, along with the dead who have been raised, will be the escort of the Lord Jesus as he returns in triumph to the earth. And when Jesus does return with all of us rejoicing around him, there will be a new creation, and we will get to live in it with Jesus in peace and harmony with those around us. Now that's definitely something that we can take comfort in, and that is definitely something that we can use to encourage one another, especially when we lose our loved ones to death. But there's another way that we can use these words to encourage one another. 
if rather than being raptured up to heaven, we will instead meet the Lord Jesus and escort him in triumph back to earth where there will be a new creation, then that means that we can live here on earth in expectation that we will continue on here in some way in a new creation, whether we die first and are resurrected at Jesus' return or whether we are alive when Jesus returns and somehow everything is made new. There are many ways in which we can anticipate the new creation while we live here on earth, but one, that, one way that we can do this and one way that we're focusing on today is by Holy Communion. If you were here in worship last week, then you heard Bishop Miller speaking to the children about our communion rails and how it's shaped in a semicircle. The idea behind this semicircular design is that the other half of the circle is in heaven, and seated at the other half of the circle are all the saints, all of our loved ones who have gone before us. When we receive Holy Communion here on earth, we are anticipating that day when Christ will return, and we will gather together with all who have gone before us at the banqueting table in the new creation. When we receive Holy Communion here on earth, we are not only becoming one with Jesus Christ, but we are also surrounded by the, both those who are alive and those who have gone before us. We are one great family with Christ as our head who has become both the host of the feast and the feast itself. Holy Communion is a mystery. Our official Lutheran interpretation of what happens in Holy Communion is that the body and the blood are in, with, and under the bread and the wine. I don't know what this means as an adult, much less trying to teach it to our kids. But what I do believe is this, that Jesus is somehow mysteriously present with us when we partake of the bread and the wine, that Jesus loves us, and that the bread and the wine are the physical elements that make the love of Jesus tangible to us. And that this is a foretaste of what we will experience one day in heaven with all of our loved ones present with us. And not only those whom we have known and loved here on earth will be with us, there will be a vast multitude of people from all times and places. One of the stories that our children here today learned during their first communion classes was the story of Zacchaeus. Now, those of you my age and older may remember learning to sing a song about Zacchaeus in Sunday school. He was that wee little man who climbed up in the sycamore tree because he was too short to see Jesus above the crowds of people there that day. What we don't always remember is that Zacchaeus hosted Jesus in his house that day for a meal. And that Zacchaeus, an infamous tax collector, repented of what he had done and vowed to restore what he had taken from people. And because of this, Jesus proclaimed on that day salvation had come to Zacchaeus. At the banquet table in the new creation, we might be seated next to Zacchaeus. Or we might be seated with another infamous criminal who repented while he was in jail. We just don't know. All we know is that when that day comes, we will all be seated together at a table in love for one another and in love for Jesus. Therefore, when someone we love dies, we grieve. No matter the circumstances of death, whether the person was old and had a full life or young and taken before their time, we will miss that person and we will grieve. But, Paul says, we have hope that we will see them again. For when Christ comes, the dead will rise first, and then we will all be caught up in the clouds to welcome and escort Jesus as he comes back in triumph to the earth. This is not something to be afraid of, but rather to look forward to. It is a promise that we will see our loved ones again. And until that time comes, we can come to the table of Holy Communion and experience being one with Christ 
and knowing that our loved ones are feasting with us on the other side of the veil. And that will bring us comfort. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may either kneel or be seated for prayer. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people, bring your salvation, and center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through meaningful worship, and send us out with your justice and truth. Hear us, O God. O oh God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore this creation and provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like waters on all nations. Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray for the veterans of this community that they are supported and loved. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger. Support the under or unemployed, and comfort any who are suffering this day. We lift up to you now all who are on our hearts, either aloud or in silence. Yeah. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, for whom we listen. Inspire the music ministry of our congregation. Fill our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness. Help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you. Bring comfort and the assurance of new life to all who grieve. Hear us, O oh God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may rise as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. They share a side of peace with one another. <laughs>
Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary commands, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. You may be seated. <laughs> Body of Christ given for you. 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 May God bless you and keep you in God's arms forever. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
Dorothy. They know what to do with me. <laughs> Come on, Dorothy. <laughs> this is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. All right. Let's start over here. <laughs> Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. 
lot of trends that shit for you.
Thank you. 